Welcome to Startup Health Now, the weekly webcast that celebrates the healthcare transformers and change makers reimagining healthcare. My name is Unity Stokes, and today we have a conversation with Andy Krakow from the California Healthcare Foundation. We're going to talk about that organization's mission and how you can get involved in helping them transform healthcare. Stick around, it's going to be a great show. It is the duty of leaders to lead, of the creative to create, of the daring to do. The free world expects leadership of us. Its fate and our fate depends upon our leadership. We are industrious, inventive, restless, with the fires that burn within us. Well, I say that nothing is easy, and the best things are the hardest. And all our troubles, all our immense difficulties, now and in the future, can I say, be solved if we have the will, the courage. The future is to those who take those who take it. Who take it. So welcome back. We're here with Andy from the California Healthcare Foundation. Um, I thought just to start the conversation off, it'd be helpful for the audience to learn about uh, California Healthcare Foundation and, and the mission, just to frame the discussion. Sure. We we have a focus, of course, on California, have uh, been around for uh, almost 20 years, um, focused on the healthcare delivery system in California. And, and in particular, I think, uh, the folks whose needs are probably not being uh, clearly met, um, the, the, the folks who are uh, perhaps the disparities and, and, and dealing with a lot of those kinds of challenges. Um, we have a particular focus on uh, access to care, um, and also sort of uh, the, the high cost conditions, um, focusing on that as well in California. Um, in addition, we've always had a focus on transparency and, and trying to encourage use of data, um, and the open data movement has uh, really allowed us to fuel that even more over the last And that's a big years. part of your role, correct, yeah. is focusing on the, the open data movement within both the foundation's work, but more largely as well? That's right. Uh, it's been very interesting to see. Uh, we have a, a strong partnership with the state of California, who've uh, really been eager participants in this open data movement, um, doing a good job of, of publishing more of their data and at smaller granularities. And I think what's been interesting to see is not only how we're getting people at a local level innovating and using those data, but also what that's sort of meant to the state, because now they have this window into what's happening in Fresno uh, or the local innovation that can take place in LA. And it's making them, it's inspiring them. They want to do better now as well. So why is, why is this important? Why is open data important? Maybe bring it sure. down to a practical level in terms of what this data means to people. It's a really good question. I, I, I think open data is perhaps less about the apps that can be created. Um, I think there's a limit to the amount of data that you can really effectively use in an app because when you're opening up data, you can't get down to the you know individual patient level and shouldn't. Um, so open data, I think, really has tremendous potential because you're talking about data for communities. You for think example. you shouldn't because of privacy, for privacy issues? Reasons, that's and, right. Yeah, yeah, and 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 governments know they can't do that. Um, so often the data that's that's provided is both de-identified and aggregated. Um, that data, however, still serves an important function. It can help raise awareness of issues locally. It can help inform policies. It can even help change behaviors, um, even when those data are at a community level. And 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 that's what I think we see is the the role that open data can play in terms of shaping social impact and and achieving some sort of social impact. So what do you what what do we start to see as more data opens up? I know Todd Park for years has talked about the data liberation movement. Mm -hmm. We're we're seeing this trend of consumers getting more access to their own data. What what becomes possible? I think some of the things that become possible with this is both uh, an enriched understanding of communities and, and what's facing a community in terms of the, the health and health care of that community. But interestingly, I think open data has also allowed government to become a lot more effective. You know, they see the innovation that's taking place and it makes them smarter. It makes them um, more data savvy. Um, it makes them more collaborative. It's interesting because a lot of these governments, their uh, agencies, they're divided into separate departments that historically have not needed to work together. So it's been siloed. It's very siloed. But when they combined have a data portal, 
um, that they all are co-managing, they need to begin to work together. And it starts to bring up issues that go beyond open data, such as integrating data at a personal level to solve some intractable problems like foster care, for example. And in addition to it impacting governments, um, state, local, federal, um, what about industry? What about um, startups? What about other groups that are now using this data in, in new ways that mm -hmm. maybe wasn't happening even a few years ago? Yep. Well, I, I think what we're starting to see is a new generation of uh, startups that are getting a lot smarter with the uh, presentation of the data. Um, both these are places where we're beginning to learn that design thinking and the UI matter greatly, and, and in terms of how to present the data, that matters greatly. We're starting to see, I think, that really maturing. But just as well, we're also starting to see a new generation of data visualization startups that are providing the tools to let others tell data stories. You know, not just like one-off visualizations, but really to integrate a video, uh, a poignant photo, um, alongside graphs and maps in order to use these open data to achieve some kind of impact. Um, so what do you, what do you think's needed um, to keep making sure this has a positive impact on, on consumers and, and ultimately outcomes? Um, is it, are we just at the early stages of how these data are coming together, how it's being leveraged for storytelling, how it's not being siloed, like where, where are we and what's still needed? We, I think, are at such an early stage. Uh, we, um, I think for a long time, have talked about the need to integrate the heart, you know, sort of the irrational place where often policy decisions, uh, personal decisions are made with the head where, you know, that's where the data reside almost, the intellectual side. Um, and we need some more models about how to do this effectively. Um, can you actually use data to help change a health behavior um, in, in someone or, or a, a community of people? Do you think that's possible? I, I would like to think it is. I really do. But I don't know if we've yet sort of built up the, um, the examples that, show, that really show that. Now that we are starting to have startups that are focusing on this data story building concept, I think we're, sort of, we're beginning to be at a place where we can do things with communicating data that weren't really possible before. I mean, we used to, before, 10 years ago, it was so hard to just find the data um, for any startup, any anyone, a government agency. And, and then we had to harvest the data. We had to find the data. Often it was in PDF format. It was impossible to take the data. And then we had to analyze the data so we didn't have as much time left over to do any communicating. Um, and a lot of those beginning stages have now become a lot easier. With APIs, you can harvest the data. With the open data movement, you can find the data a lot easier. Data science firms are, are, are in place now to help with the social good. Um, you know, they, there are a lot of data science firms that really want to do public good. Um, and so we can begin to think about this communication piece. So as you <clears throat> dream out five years, 10 years from now in terms of uh, what you'd like to see happen, um, beyond just getting access to the data, uh, what, what happens? What, what would you love to see? And, and mm -hmm. I guess, what would you love to see? You know, sometimes I often think about it as uh, policy decisions. Like uh, whenever there's a presidential campaign, um, it's easy to see how that sort of devolves into um, pu policy decisions and, and, and communication that really doesn't integrate data or, or educate us in any way. And, and often that's what, to me, is, is what we're aiming for, what we're striving for. Um, it could be for a presidential election. It could just as well be for a local community that's, that's trying to work with uh, the civic sector, the civic innovation sector, and others trying to solve um, some of the really difficult pressing health issues and, 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 and making some progress in some of the disparities. And, and the role that data can play to raise awareness of those issues and, and maybe even motivate us to change our behaviors. I think that's possible. We just have got to build up the mechanisms. Do you think at, at some point the data almost disappears again back into mm -hmm. the background? Um, it's there, it's accessible, but it's not thought of as data, it's more just integrated into the point. solutions of our life. I think that's right. I think if we can get beyond thinking of these as data and, and data sets, but it's just information that we're integrating into our decision-making, 
all the better. Um, and it's going to take some time. Some, you know, we, we're, I think, only at the beginning stages of this. Um, because before it took us so long to just find the data, um, and now we can harness it more. We just need to learn how to harness it for the good. Are there any examples or, or maybe lessons learned um, that you can share of either organizations or startups or people who are doing this well, um, who are using data really well or in some inspiring way that, mm -hmm. that you think could serve as a model for, for others? We, we have a, uh, a program now that we're working with seven counties in California, um, California Healthcare Foundation is, and, and mostly with the health departments in those counties. Um, and some of them are big, like San Diego, which is a, a tremendously data-rich county. They're very sophisticated with data. And some of them are very poor and small counties, like Lake County. And seeing how they are working to create some um, interesting stories, whether it's on uh, HIV or uh, well-being, um, healthy eating, active living, or even for that matter on something like uh, farm workers and the plight of farm workers. Um, and they're using a technology, um, live stories, that enables this kind of interaction, um, this kind of data story building. And, and it's been fascinating for me to see how counties, a county health department you wouldn't expect normally to be on the, the, the front end and trying to you know, get beyond the static data PDF report. And here they are trying new ways to communicate. Um, and so I would point to them. Um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a long road for them. Um, they are so used to a familiar way of communicating that data PDF report, but they're beginning to see the potential of, um, of creating a more interactive platform that not only can allow for, like I said, videos, photos, but also to be able to integrate um, comments from the, the public. You know, um, that's not something that we've been used to be able to do, you know. So, so it's becoming more interactive as well. Yeah, very much so. So uh, la last question, um, where can people learn more about the, the mission of California Healthcare Foundation? And, and if you were to ask um, people listening in the audience um, to get involved with this, what, what would your ask be? Interesting. Well, you can go to our website, uh, www.chcf.org, uh, to learn all about the California Healthcare Foundation. Uh, I think my ask would be that we all focus a little bit more on that last step of that process of being able to think about what is it you're trying to do when you're communicating the data. If you're a startup, you in essence are communicating data. Um, you know, you're, if you're integrating data, you're trying to help your customers uh, achieve some kind of impact. Perhaps it's for their own personal lives. If you're a government, you're trying to ask. Um, you know, it could be uh, the citizens of your of your uh, county or uh, others to achieve some sort of impact. And think a lot about that. Um, what is it you're trying to do, and what's the best way to package the data? So as you say, it becomes less about the data and more it's just information that's informing our decision making. Well, thank you so much, Andy. Thank and, you. and thanks for the work that California Healthcare Foundation does to bring more uh, great care to, to people in the world. Thank you. Thank you.